Hey YouTube, long time no see. Uh, we are going to talk about cannabis today. And um, first off, I'm gonna tell you my story. So I used to have a real serious drug addiction um, when I was in my early 20s and I'm in my late 30s now. Um, and I went through 12 step as a way of getting over that addiction. But um, after about 13 or 14 so, years of, uh, of being clean, um, I decided to do a little experiment on myself to see if I was normal, a normal user. <laughs> and uh, I decided to try drinking alcohol. And um, it turns out that I didn't really like alcohol all that much, so it was relatively easy to sort of use it in the same manner that um, your average person uses alcohol, you know, like maybe a a drink or two on the weekends uh, or um, to celebrate a really good event or things like that you know sort of healthy usage um, and so I did that for a number of years and you know thought of myself as maybe cured from addiction um, and that you know maybe I could go back to using cannabis again uh, and um, I think uh, around that time I was also starting to have troubles with my my uh, now ex-wife of uh, about five years into the relationship we started to hit uh, a lot of troubles and difficulties and things that seemed like they couldn't be reconciled and I was also starting to have my arthritis issues at the same time and so it was rather a difficult time for me I was uh, extremely depressed uh, I didn't know about some of the tricks that I've learned about dealing with depression and so I, I didn't have those tools um, but I also didn't want to go back on antidepressants which have numerous side effects so um, in a moment of weakness, I decided to go and buy some cannabis from a neighbor next door. He had the kind that I really liked, and I thought, well, I don't know, because I'm miserable, you know, maybe I deserve it to myself to experiment with this and see if I can use it recreationally the same way that I would use alcohol. And I told myself that uh, I would never let it interfere with my life in the, in the same way that I used to. Um, and I, I told myself that I would only smoke on the weekends once uh, once a week or once a day on the weekends and so um, I proceeded to do that um, and had some success but uh, over the course of a couple weeks I found myself smoking every night um, and I realized that it sort of did what it used to do for me is uh, numbing the emotions and it made a, a very difficult marriage a lot easier to accept in a time where I wasn't able to do anything about it and didn't feel that I could fix it. So um, cannabis started to become an emotional crutch for me again. Um, and it, yeah, it quickly devolved into um, smoking every night. Um, I mean, during the day I would, I would not consume it uh, so that I could have a clear head and work, but um, I, I was sort of a little bit disappointed in myself, but I figured if I could continue to smoke it just at night to relax, that um, I could have sort of a healthy relationship with the substance. But um, I continued to do that for five years, and it uh, as my my marriage sort of went up and down um, during the down times, where I was having a really hard time dealing with my wife, um, I would smoke on the weekends when we had time together during the day um, because um, I don't know I was I guess I was just numbing my feelings of depression with her and didn't see any way out so I became a cannabis addict again and I'm sort of I, I, only until we uh, we separated about a month and a half ago or so uh, did I realize that I was medicating myself so I'm a little disappointed that I did that um, and after, after we broke up, I, um, I continued to smoke a little bit, but I noticed that I, I didn't really know why I was smoking, uh, cannabis at night. It didn't make me feel better. I didn't have anything to run away from except for, you know, all the feelings that <laughs> you get when you are leaving a relationship of 10 years, which has been pretty intense on its own, but I didn't get any satisfaction from using it. So that's what made me realize I was, I was medicating myself and, I'm just really, I mean, I guess I can't be too disappointed in myself because um, because of my arthritis issues with my leg, I, I didn't, 
I wasn't able to easily leave the relationship and I was sort of dependent on her so I was kind of trapped and she also felt sort of trapped with me as well uh, it just wasn't a good scene so now you know over the last couple of weeks I haven't been smoking it and I've noticed that there's a lot of differences in the way that I see the world and the way that I react to things um, for starters um, I didn't think that I was a person that experienced strong emotions um, one of the things that cannabis does is sort of lulls you into a false sense of everything's cool. And um, I sort of was just, you know, a cool, calm, collected character, uh, a little little bit disaffected by what was actually going on in my life, and uh, kind of liked that that made me feel that way. Um, I was able to deal with someone who <laughs> it was very difficult without blowing up on them, and so it sort of, in a way, it might have made my marriage last longer, but really I wasn't wasn't really happy with that person and they weren't happy with me uh, but yeah I've noticed that my reception to emotional things that happen in the world is so much greater it's like I have some kind of clarity that I didn't have before about what's actually going on and it's funny because if you even smoke just at night like I would smoke at maybe 8 or 9 p.m. and then go to bed at midnight um, the effect would still sort of carry into the morning and so when I would just you know it'd be like 1 p.m. and I'd still have sort of like a kind of disaffected kind of mental state and so I've really been missing out on part of the human experience by using cannabis and so um, yeah that's just been kind of open to me uh, and the other thing is um, you do get dependent you know if I didn't have it at night I'd feel like I was like missing part of my routine so I was definitely an addict and I know nowadays that it's not something that I can use normally um, and then the, you know sometimes it can uh, really enhance your enjoyment of a lot of things like when I would go to the gym I would love to smoke cannabis before I would go because I could feel I could really feel my muscles doing things and I would notice um, what was going on in my body a lot easier because it's just you know it's it's a substance that increases your perception but you know, there's a downside to that, and that in the morning, when I didn't have it, um, I would have less perception, and I would be a little bit on the grumpy side. So um, there's just this rebound effect, and you're sort of stealing some uh, pleasure from your morning at night, and so it's really a net a net loss. Um, and the whole thing about um, it growing man tits, you always hear that uh, about its health risk. Um, I don't think that's true, but I'm quite sure that. It reduces your testosterone levels and makes you a little more estrogen dominant because I've been going to the gym for the last four years and I uh, I've noticed in the last couple of weeks that just um, the amount of progress that I'm making is a lot faster in terms of uh, increasing the amount of weight that I can move and the sort of the um, the feeling that I get afterwards of you know like a sort of a testosterone boost is, is so much greater so I'm <laughs> I'm like, it's, I'm kind of disappointed that I was missing out on that effect. Um, and also, yeah, just seeing the world a little bit clearer. Um, I think that, that using cannabis is maybe, it's not the worst thing you can use. I mean, there's way worse drugs out there. I think this stuff should be legal and easily accessible, but we need to be aware of the negative things that it does to us when we use it. And another thing that struck out to me is, um, a good friend of mine had recently been crashed into by somebody who was clearly using cannabis in their car and the person just rammed it right into his the back of his car at a stoplight they were just not paying attention and I just thought well gee there's so many times that I had my ex-wife in the car with me while I was under the influence and I'm an excellent driver I've never had a crash in my life but it's it's you know I, I was putting her her life at risk you know to some degree by being under the influence of this stuff even if even how light it was so it's, it's like one of those things where when you actually see it uh, um, hurt somebody, um, you, it gives you a little bit of pause, I think, you know, is it, is it really worth it to have a little bit more pleasure in exchange for less pleasure in the morning um, in exchange for more danger in my life, potentially? Um, and I know that when I would consume it and I would operate a motor vehicle, um, I was definitely... <sighs> You know, I would, I would forget to take turns and things like that. So it's, it was affecting my cognition and my driving skills to a degree. Not that I harmed anyone. And here I am 
admitting to something on camera, but hopefully that won't. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm going to leave that in because this, this needs to be said. People need to talk about this shit and I'm going to take the risk. And, you know, at some point, cannabis is going to be legal 50 statewide. So fuck it. Like, let's talk about this. You are, you are risking things uh, when, you, when you use this stuff. And, it, you know, if you're using heavy machinery or anything like that, you know, you could be making a mistake you um, wouldn't, mis wouldn't make otherwise. So uh, it... It's really something to consider, you know, like how valuable do you think your life is and the lives of others when, when you're in a position of responsibility? Um, is it worth it? So hopefully that's got you thinking. And because it's, um, because I'm a big fan of Joe Rogan and it's Sober October, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to throw out my cannabis on camera and prove to you that, um, that I'm serious about this. And this is sort of maybe a self-accountability thing and if, I don't know, maybe if you're thinking about doing this yourself, uh, maybe I've inspired you. Um, well, let, let me first say that uh, about the quitting process. Um, I did have a little bit of difficulty sleeping at night um, a couple days after I quit, and then I was a little bit grumpy, and then after a number of days, uh, I just didn't even notice that I wasn't using cannabis other than the fact that in the morning, uh, my, my mind is a little bit clear. So, um, it's very easy to quit. <laughs> so let's uh, let's uh, get rid of some cannabis right now. So I've got this uh, this last little remnant here, and we're just gonna let this uh, dust get out of here. So there's that. See you later, addictive drug. Um, I've also got um, some nice. Uh, this is actually just CBD. But um, I don't need this, so um, it's sort of like a medicinal one. So we're just gonna take this wonderful little nug right here and just I'm not picking that up off the ground. So and uh, you know, here's the paraphernalia box here and. Uh, I'll throw this away, there's no use in this pipe. So that's how easy it is to quit cannabis. And I hope um, I hope I've given you some some thinking about how it could affect your life. Um, yeah. Another thing is um, I'm pretty sure that I wasn't as emotionally receptive to my ex-wife and uh, that using cannabis um, was sort of an annoyance to her because she, she doesn't use any substances. And I was when I was around here, I was under the influence about 75% of the time. So I'm pretty sure that um, I negatively affected our relationship by just being sort of out of it and not uh, fully emotionally receptive to her. But um, so in hindsight, I, I sort of I sort of regret that being one of the things that put the coffin in our marriage. Um, and it, maybe you can relate to that if you're a cannabis user. So hope I've given you a lot to think about. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.